Welcome everyone. This is part five in our series on contextual word representations. We're going to be talking about the Electra model. Electra stands for efficiently learning an encoder that classifies token replacements accurately, which is a helpfully descriptive breakdown of a colorfully named model. Recall that I finished the BERT screencast by identifying some known limitations of the BERT model. Uh, Electra is really keying into two and three in that list. So the second one identified by the BERT authors is just that of the MLM objective, they say, we're creating a mismatch between pre-training and fine tuning since the mask token that we use is never seen during fine tuning. So ideally for the model we fine tune, we would make no use of a mask token. Devlin et al. also observed on the, of the MLM objective that it has a downside. We make predictions about only 15% of the tokens in each batch. Uh, we have an intuition that that's a pretty inefficient use of the data we have available to us. Ideally, we would make more predictions and Electra seeks to make good on that intuition as well. So let's dive into the core model structure here. We'll use a simple example. We have an input token sequence X, the chef cooked the meal. And as usual with BERT, we can mask out some of those tokens and then have a BERT or BERT-like model try to reconstruct those mask tokens. However, we're gonna do that with a twist. Instead of always trying to learn the actual input token, we're gonna sample tokens proportional to the generator probabilities so that sometimes the actual token will be input as with the case with the here. And sometimes it will be some other token as the case with cooked going to eight in this position. Now the job of Electra, the discriminator here, is to figure out which of those tokens were the, in the original input sequence and which have been replaced. So that's a binary prediction task and we can make it about all of the tokens in our input sequence if we choose to. The actual loss for, for uh, Electra is the sum of the generator loss and a weighted version of the Electra that is the discriminator loss. However, that's kind of masking a, an important asymmetry in this model here. Once we have trained the generator, we can let it fall away and do all of our fine tuning on the discriminator that is on Electra itself, which means that we'll be fine tuning a model that never saw any of those mask tokens. So we address that first limitation of BERT. And we're also going to make a prediction with, with Electra about every single one of the input tokens, which means that we're making more use of the available data. One thing I really like about the Electra paper is that it offers a really rich set of analyses of the efficiency of the model and of its optimal design. So I'm going to highlight some of those results here, starting with this generator discriminator relationship result. So the authors observe that where the generator and discriminator are the same size, they can share all their transformer parameters. They can kind of be one model in essence. And they find that more sharing is indeed better, which is encouraging. However, they also observed that the best results coming, come from having a generator that is small compared to the discriminator. And this plot kind of summarizes the evidence there. So uh, we have our glue score as the goalpost that we're going to use to assess these models. That's along the y-axis. Along the x-axis, we have the generator size. And then we've plotted out a few sizes for the discriminator. And I think what you can see quite clearly is that in general, you get the best results on glue where the discriminator is two to three times larger than the generator. And that's true even for this very small model in green down here, the results are overall not very good, but we see that same relationship where the optimal discriminator is at size 256 uh, and the generator at size 64. That's where we reach our peak results. And that's kind of comparable to this very large model in blue where optimal size for the discriminator is 768 compared to 256 for the generator. They also do a bunch of really interesting efficiency analyses. One thing I like about the paper is that it's kind of oriented toward figuring out how we can train these models more efficiently with fewer compute resources. Uh, and this is a kind of summary of central evidence that they offer that Electra can be an efficient model. So again, we're gonna use along the Y axis, the glue score as our goalpost. But along the X axis here, we have pre-training flops. So this would be the number of compute operations that you need to pre-train the model. In blue along the top here is Electra. It's the very best model. In orange, just below it is adversarial Electra, uh, which is an interesting approach to Electra where we essentially train the generator to try to fool the discriminator as opposed to having the two cooperate as in core Electra. And that turns out to be pretty good. And also these green lines are really interesting. So two-stage Electra is where I start by training just against the BERT objective. And at a certain point, switch over to training the Electra objective. And you can see that even that is better than just continuing on with BERT all the way up to the maximum for our compute budget here. 
The paper also explores a bunch of variations on the Electra objective itself. So I presented to you full Electra, and it's full Electra in the sense that over here on the right, we're making predictions about every single one of the tokens in the input. We could also explore something that was analogous to BERT. Electra 15% would be the case where we make predictions only about tokens that were way back here in the input, X masked, actually masked out. Another variant that the team considered actually relates to how we train BERT. So recall that for BERT, we train both by masking and by replacing some tokens with other randomly chosen tokens. And we could try training the generator just with that approach, which would eliminate the mask token entirely. So that's this variant here where we have no masking on X mask, but rather just randomly replaced tokens from the actual vocabulary. And then finally, all tokens MLM would adopt some ideas from Electra into the BERT model. So recall that for the MLM objective, we essentially turned it off for tokens that weren't masked, but there's no principled reason why we're doing that. We could of course have the loss apply to every single one of the tokens in the input stream. And that gives us all tokens MLM on the generator side. And the central finding of the paper, I suppose, is that Electra is the best of all of these models. You also have a really good model if you do all tokens MLM, which is something that might inform development on the BERT side, uh, in addition to BERT in the context of Electra. Uh, replace MLM is less good and Electra 15% kind of down there at the bottom near BERT. I think this is kind of showing us that we should make more predictions. That was a, a guiding intuition for Electra and it seems to be borne out by these results. And finally, uh, as is common in this space, the Electra team did some model releases of pre-trained parameters that you can make use of. They did Electra base and Electra large, which are kind of comparable to the corresponding BERT releases. I think an interesting thing they did is also release this BERT, this Electra small model, which is designed to quickly be trained on a single GPU. Again, tying into the idea that we ought to be thinking about how we can train models like this when we have highly constrained compute resources. Electra was keyed into that idea from the very beginning. And I think the small model shows that it can be productive.